Well, first, you get a flavor of just how serious the situation is. There's absolutely a real threat uh, from Russia across uh, the border. That hasn't dissipated, as you were just outlining. But there's also a huge recognition and appreciation for the support coming from Britain. That's very, very obvious indeed. But the penny is dropping, too, that uh, Ukraine is at the epicenter, if you like, of the clash between Western liberalism and authoritarianism. There is a much bigger picture at play, which I think the West is now beginning to appreciate. And if we blink, where could uh, this uh, take us? It's too late to bring in a NATO division, as I call for. I recognize that. But the West, I think, needs to ask themselves what more can we do? Perhaps look at a no-fly zone. Certainly, defense spending will have to increase as the world does get more dangerous. But it's this bigger alliance between Russia and China. It's through that prism that we need to look at events here in Ukraine. I did want to, um, I know that you are uh, quite close with Lord Dunnett. You've been speaking to him quite a lot over the last few days. Given that you've been, uh, you brought up the troops there, I just wanted to play this grab to you from what he said to us earlier on in the week and see where that puts us now. Here we go. I shouldn't smile. Um, you're not the first person to have asked me um, about Tobias Elwood. Uh, actually, I rang Tobias about 20 minutes ago and said, come on, chap, what, what, what are you getting on about? And that was when we were talking, of course, about troops on the ground in um, Ukraine uh, um, and particularly uh, around Kiev, the capital. What would you say in response to him? Well, we did have a conversation and we're actually saying the same thing. It's far too late. Uh, I was calling for this months and months ago when the build-up of troops, of Russian troops, uh, was evident. Uh, there's a process that has to be followed. Uh, we need to take the British people with us to recognise that, yes, uh, this is a high-risk strategy, but ultimately it would prevent an invasion. You're not starting a war, you're actually preventing a Russian attack, and that must be a good thing. NATO is all about European security, and Ukraine is part of Europe. The consequences of not doing anything, allowing that invasion, invasion to actually uh, take place, will have massive implications for the UK economy. Oil, gas, food prices will go up. But like I said, there's a bigger picture at play at where Russia is going. Its alliance with China will, is a turning point, if you like, uh, in our uh, security on the international stage. And I think privately, the international community is regretting not stepping forward. But we still can act. We still can offer a no-fly zone. And critically, this initiative that Britain has put forward, the last time the Prime Minister was here, this alliance between Poland, Ukraine and Britain is something that's very, very important indeed. That needs to be explored as to how we can support the Ukrainian people. If we do nothing and allow an invasion to take place, it will have, I think, a, a totemic effect on European security. This is a serious moment and uh, we're being tested. Lord Dunnett also said that we shouldn't allow Ukraine to join NATO. The German Chancellor Schultz, who was in Moscow, as you know, speaking to President Putin this week, he seemed to hint at that as well. Where do you stand on that debate? Well, we need to get over this idea that we hide behind the excuse that because a nation is not in NATO, that they don't deserve some form of serious support. Libya, uh, for example, um, Kosovo, uh, Bosnia, Iraq, Afghanistan, these are all places that we went in as NATO capability, but they're not members of NATO, but there were security concerns here. So we need to stop hiding behind this. The West has become too risk-averse over the months, indeed the years itself. I'd even call for a Casablanca-type conference, if you like, because you've got Berlin, Paris, London and Washington still looking in slightly different directions, and that's being exploited uh, by uh, Putin uh, in Moscow. What's a Casablanca conference? Well, this happened during the Second World War. It was before you even decided what you wanted to do, you made sure that the home team was pointing in the same direction. So, yes, we've threatened the sanctions, but if you understand the bigger picture, if uh, uh, Putin is wanting to realign his country uh, with China, sanctions will only help him persuade the Russian people, look, our future is not with the West, it's actually with China. We don't need that Nord Stream 2 going to, across to the Western Europe. We can have three of those with China. And, of course, they have scant regard for human rights issues and so on, uh, an equal disdain for the West. And that alliance, as I say, I can't be, more, be stronger in what I'm, uh, my concerns here, that new alliance will have a massive implication for geopolitical security over the next few decades.
There was a day of unity yesterday in uh, Ukraine and Kiev, particularly some concerns that yesterday was going to be the day that there was an incursion and an invasion. That didn't happen, thankfully. Um, but what, what's the mood there like as, a, as a, an outsider, as a Westerner, if you will? Um, what are you picking up? Well, when you first come here, you can feel the tension. There's no doubt about it. The threat is very, very real indeed. But there's a stoic sense of determination here. Don't forget, the people here have been living with this for years and years and years, with the war going on. But a crisis you know, could break out at any moment, and uh, contingency plans are in place. There is an absolute worry. And I think privately there is a, a desire to uh, you know, call for the West to do more. This is their moment of need, and at the moment the West is not doing enough. And doing more looks like what? Well, like I said, uh, initially a no-fly zone would be help, very, very helpful indeed. That is something I hope that could be explored at the Munich Security Conference. Certainly, as each day goes by and an invasion doesn't take place, we should be absolutely supporting um, Ukraine. As I say, that bond between Poland, uh, Ukraine and Britain is something that absolutely wants to be explored. That's something that you can ask James Heapy about. That alliance there could be the genesis of, uh, and include the Baltics as well, of a new strength of support, of security, in Eastern Europe. But I, I stress, this is a, the bigger picture taking place here. It's not just about Ukraine. This is about global security and where our world goes to as our international rules-based order will be reinterpreted by Russia and China if they form this axis uh, over the coming months and years. But you are stepping back now, are you, uh, Mr Elwood, from UK boots on the ground? I, I made that very clear, that that was an option. That option has departed. We simply cannot do that. When I first raised this at the end of last year, yes, and speaking to military, uh, senior military leaders uh, in both in Britain and, uh, and the United States, absolutely it could have happened. It would have taken five days to actually mobilise those forces at the request of Ukraine. This is what they actually wanted to. But we blinked. We didn't appreciate that full picture. We didn't have the situational awareness to say, my goodness, this is not just about Ukraine. There's something else going on here. The West is now appreciating that. There's no doubt about it. But I worry that it still isn't fully understood. Like I said, any sanctions that are imposed on to, to Russia, they will retaliate and it will give Putin the excuse to pivot his country away from the West towards an alliance with China. Mr Elwood, uh, it's good to talk to you. Thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you.